Hey there, welcome to day seven of the Get Up and Go Challenge. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, your host or hostess for this challenge. You're, you're kind of leader through the challenge or whatever. Uh, I want to talk today about what I call the pandemic pivot, which is actually just changes challenge, right? It's I, I've been teaching challenges for, I mean, probably 20 years and doing challenges for my entire life, right? Each and every one of us have personally experienced probably tens of thousands of challenges depending on how old we are. I'm almost 60, so even if I only face one challenge a day, which I guarantee every single day we have to make decisions and choices and we face challenges and dilemmas and we overcome them and we live through them and most of them we don't even think about. We think about the big challenges, the big things that affect us and cause us to change. The job loss, the new job, the wedding, the divorce, the relationship gone bad, the new relationship, the, um, the friendships that change, the organizations we join, the organizations we leave all the time we're facing change and challenges. Never in my life, and I hope that never again, have we been facing a global pandemic, a situation in which all of us are being impacted by the same root cause. The root cause is that we've got this global pandemic and this pandemic is causing a ripple effect and changing all of our lives. Whether you're, you've lost your job, whether your business is shut, whether you've uh, gotten sick and recovered because people that have passed away they're sad, but there's there's not anything we can do with it, right? We cannot change the past, any one of us. But what are we doing during this pandemic? And whatever your situation, it's impacting every single human being, all of us, right? We're all getting some way, shape, or war form impacted by the pandemic. So I want to share today what I've been doing for my personal pivot, for the personal changes that I've made in my life and how the pandemic's affecting me. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about... Uh, and if I can get them online, one of them's had a COVID scare uh, and the other one is, is traveling for a wedding, but I'm gonna see if I can get a few people online to share their experience, to share what they've been doing during this time to make sure that they are better off after this pandemic than when it began. So as our states are coming out, as our businesses are opening, in my home state of Wisconsin, businesses have started opening my nails, one nail salon, not my nail salon, but one nail salon in the area opened. Uh, some restaurants have started opening on a slower basis with all kinds of restrictions, but but that's good, right? That we open slowly, you know, when we're moving forward and progressing, sometimes it's better to progress slowly and adjust along the way than to, you know, to go full force into something. Uh, test the waters, right? We're always testing and tweaking and testing and tweaking. So I wanna share what I'm doing today in my pivot, and then tomorrow, I want to share with you several people in different walks of life, in different industries, in different situations, so that you know you're not alone, right? This is one of the one of the gifts of this strange time is that we know with 100% certainty that we're not alone in what we're experiencing. Even though we all feel like it and we, it feels to us like it's personal, it's just us that's going through this and we're freaking out about our finances or we're freaking out about our relationships or we're freaking out about something because it is emotionally impacting us immediately, guess what? Billions of people are experiencing very similar, if not the exact same thing. So we know that, oh my God, I lost my job, I don't have an income. Well, you and, I don't know, 50 million other people in America, I think that the number's gotta be up to about 50 million by now. And some of those people are starting to go back to work and that's creating all kinds of new havoc and, and conflicts and, and dilemmas as well. As it will, we're gonna definitely be working through this situation for a while. So what did I do when I heard about the pandemic? What did I do when it first hit? And what have I been doing moving forward? Well, for me personally, and I feel a little weird saying this, but of my life over the last two years, I've had to make massive changes and massive adjustments in my life and in my lifestyle. I am legally blind now, and so that means like a couple of years ago I had to stop driving. Well, when you stop driving, you stop going to places and interacting physically with people a lot. Uh, my visions also meant that I stopped attending a lot of in-person events and started to do a lot of things online. I've been using Zoom for several years. I've been using other tools for several years. I've been doing videos, live videos for a couple of years now. I think today was day 843 of my just documenting my journey as I've transitioned from the corporate world and the brick and mortar world of lots of different businesses and different industries to the online world and doing things online. I, I don't call myself an online marketer because I don't think I am, but doing what I do online and helping people online. 
Uh, and I've been doing that through challenges for several years. Even before I was online, I was doing challenges. I was sharing them on my blog. It was really interesting. And it was for challenges I was facing in my offline businesses. I went through a period of, of really, really bad stuff and, and stressful times with a bad business partner. And during that, I did a stress challenge. I did stress challenges. Mostly I did them for me because I needed to find ways to positively respond to keep me level and keep me cool and to keep me from having, you know, which I ended up having a sudden cardiac arrest, but to keep it from killing me, uh, I did, did stress challenges and I've done all different challenges over the years. Mostly I haven't done any relationship challenges, but when it comes to business, health and, and wellness, I did have done a bunch of those challenges, but health and wellness and business, primarily business with health and wellness on the side if I wanted to do something. I did a 90 day challenge the end of last year, last fall, because I needed to get my blood pressure down. I went to see my cardiologist and he said, your blood pressure's through the roof, it needs to come down or you will be on medication. Now, I'm not a big medication fan because I tend to be one of those people that gets a lot of the silly side effects, right? The known effects from from prescription drugs. So I wanna to keep to a minimum anything that I have to take on a, on a regular basis. I have an ICD, so I do need to take a beta blocker. And that's enough, that's enough. That thing makes me ornery. Learned that from my sister. She was living with me for a while when my dad was terminally ill. And uh, she's like, you are terrible every time. Rah, rah, rah. And, and so I realized I had just started taking a new medication and, and it made me really grumpy. And so I realized that if I just took it at night when I went to bed, that I didn't have that effect. And so that was, you know, some things we learn along the way, right? We're all continually improving. So challenges, I've always done challenges. So I thought, well, I'm gonna continue to do challenges through the pandemic. So I'm just finishing up and you're part of this get up and go challenge. This is the first, you know, five to 10 day challenge that I've done for get up and go. Last month, when I realized we were gonna be, before in March right away, I already had a challenge scheduled when we started getting shut down. I think, I don't, I'd have to go back and look. I think it was the live challenge workshop and I was teaching people how to do challenges for their business. See, I've done so many, I can't even keep track of, of what I've done them on anymore. But I think in March, it was the live challenge workshop. And then in, I, you know, as the governor announced, hey, it's gonna be April 30th before we do anything. I was like, all right, that's not cool. I'm gonna do a get up and go challenge and help people know what to do every step of the way for the month of April. By the way, if you want to go back and watch that challenge, I never took it down. It's on this very page, the get up and go challenge. Just go to the unit. I don't remember if I put it in units. Well, I'll go check and in the group, I'm pretty sure I put it in units. And so you could just go to the unit in the get up and go group and you could go through it in order and do the 30 day challenge. Go through the 30 days. If you've got time, even if you don't have time, make the time. It doesn't take that much time every day. Cause I tried to keep those around the 10 minute mark, I think. Some of them were 20, I'm sure, because you know, I start talking. Uh, but go back and watch that challenge. Get what you can out of it. And we went over a couple of different areas of our life that we could focus on during that challenge. Uh, you know, this one I just focused on, okay, my physical. But it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, contribution and relationships, we want to make sure we're considering all of those areas. I'm actually in a challenge right now that added two to that. It's it's a more uh, spiritual oriented group and it's really fun to do other people. I love doing other people's challenges. I don't just lead them, I love doing them as well and continually learning and evolving and growing. How do I want my challenges to be? A lot of people do challenges differently because they're all about the marketing and all about the money and I don't do my challenges that way because that's not why I do them. I do them for personal development to help people and to move people forward in their life. Um, and then if you decide to get involved with me later on, that's awesome, but it's not my overall objective. A lot of people's challenges are just a marketing tool. You know, it's like the launches, the live launch method. Um, and I love Kelly Roach, don't get me wrong, but um, the live launch method is a way of bringing people into their high ticket coaching program. And it's, it's just a challenge over and over and over again, the same challenge over and over and over again. And I have not done Starting Monday, the 25th, will be the second time I've done the same challenge, but I think that will be, that's my first time doing the same challenge more than once. I've always done different challenges. So there again, I want to get more consistent and to be able to serve more people in a consistent, focused way. So I'm actually doing that same, similar challenge on 
starting Monday that, that we're just coming to the end of now. So my pivot has been, I haven't had to do a whole lot of pivoting because I was already online. I was already doing things online. I've already been making videos, creating content, serving people on social media. But one thing I am doing and one thing that I'm doing with a vengeance is massive personal development and learning. I am participating in people's online courses. I am doing online courses. I am doing a mastermind and coaching. I'm in a mastermind and coaching group for branding to focus and change. And I'm also pivoting from my persona of pajama grandma. For about two years online, I've always been pajama grandma. I do everything, all my videos in my robe. And for the last, since the pandemic, I've been rolling out of that and kind of sloughing off decided it wasn't appropriate to have pajama grandma die. I was gonna do that, but it doesn't seem appropriate because she's still a part of me, right? It's it's always been a part of my persona, but it's not the persona that I wanna move forward with. I don't wanna just help people to do online businesses. I wanna continue to help businesses to add an online component so that when pandemics and things like this hit, they automatically don't miss a beat. They just roll into another aspect and another prop part of their business. Businesses that I've worked with in the past that did that are doing so much better than the businesses that have nothing going except maybe a Yelp review, right? Uh, that's, that's just in the restaurant industry, for example. Uh, so I want to continue to do that. I don't want to go and just only help people that are online. There's plenty of coaches and people out there that have never done anything offline. They're just helping people do stuff online. And to me, I might be a little prejudiced, but I always feel like there's more to life than just the online component. Yes, it, it has incredible things and incredible flexibility to our lives, but I took an Italian food manufacturing business and I got that down to the four hour work week before uh, Timothy Ferris even had discovered online products and services and, and his online four hour work week thing. And then I read his book, loved his book, because I thought it was wonderful. But he actually created that book online by asking people for feedback and putting chapters out and getting feedback and reading and that's how he, he created this amazing bestseller that's that's another study and process in and of itself so massive personal development personal growth honing my skills focusing getting coaching and help in the areas that i want to get better at uh and then i turn around and i, I teach people and, and teach them to do the same right and i've been doing that for several years so what are you doing what have you decided what changes are you making during this period of time because a pivot pivot just means change right i, I kind of laugh every time i hear the word pivot but it fits with pandemic i like the sound of pandemic pivot better than i like the sound of you know change challenge or, or challenges challenges are just change right so i guess challenges and pivot and change and they can all be used interchangeably so that's been my experience. My experience is things are different. I am immune compromised. I do have lots of inflammation. And I will say that during this pandemic, I have uh, let some of my, my inflammation run away with me. So I have to be even more careful uh, than otherwise. But guess what? Most of the population doesn't have to be careful. They can just go about their business. They might get COVID. They might not. But they will. They'll be fine. They'll survive it. The, the death rate isn't as extreme as we had thought initially but that's what happens when things impact the whole world we don't know everything up front we have to figure it out as we go along and you do that by actually taking action trying things out testing them out finding from other people modeling other people hey what's working for joe what's working for for you know sandy what what have they tried what have they done well how might i be able to learn from that and apply that or try that in my life or in my business or in my relationships or with my you know physical well-being so, uh, and, and I could go through each of the areas of my life. If anybody wants to hear that, I could share each of those. But for the most part, I just kept doing more of the same. And I just pivoted slightly the topics and the, the messaging and what I'm sharing with people. My <coughs> Supersize Your Business brand, to me, you know, 70% of my businesses are growing during this pandemic. 30% of them are shut down by the government, you know, because they... The people that I work with, I mean, they, their businesses were shut down due to their municipalities or their state governors have, have mandated that for people's safety, you are shut down. You are not a, you know, your nail salon, you're not a uh, emergency or necessary business. Therefore, you are shut down. 
and a lot of, you know, about 30% of my businesses are in that boat. And so what they're doing is different than what the 70% that are kicking butt and taking names and growing are doing, right? But that's, that's the way everyone is, right? If you've lost your job, if you're working, if you're at home working with your kids, those are three different situations, but each of them require that action be taken, that we be moving to figure things out, right? Because we can figure it out. Everything, every problem has a solution. All we have to do is ask. So that's, that's my pivot, my pandemic pivot so far. I will say I'm, I'm still going, you know, there's the events are closed now. So since I had been tapering the amount of events that I went to, hasn't been a huge impact, but I have been exploring different opportunities and, and different skills that I want to get better at. I want to get better at speaking. So I, I've attended some speaking uh, webinars and speaking courses. I've taken a couple of, on, I've taken, wow, I've taken a lot of online courses and done a lot of courses and programs uh, in the last 45 days. And I will continue to do that. I'm always doing it, but I've been really using my time. I just got done on, on Sunday was my last book. I'd read 30 books in 30 days. Now, if someone legally blind can read 30 books in 30 days, I don't know what everybody else is complaining about, right? Was it was it hard and definitely a push and a challenge for me? Yes, but guess what? From a personal growth and development standpoint, guess what? I had to find all kinds of technology and all kinds of ways that I've been resisting and putting off because I don't want to admit that I can't see and that I can't drive and that I can't do things I used to always do without even uh, missing a beat. But I can still do a lot of things. So I'm focusing, focusing just like during the pandemic on what I can do and finding ways to do more and more and more in spite of what's going on around me, just like we can do with the pandemic. That's it. If you have any questions about that, or if you want me to answer any more questions about my personal situation, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow with stories of what other people are doing. I'll share some of the stories of, and see if I can get some guests on to share their own stories. It's always more fun coming from them about what they're doing. Some from the, from the ones that are shut down, some from the people that are working from home, some from the people that have lost their job, and, and maybe some from the people that are just smoking right now because their businesses are so busy, and what they're doing to keep up with their systems and making sure that they're putting things in place or, or filling the holes and the gaps that are being highlighted during this time of massive change. All right, have an awesome day, and I will be with you tomorrow. Bye.